Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Thank you all for being here today. Happy New Year to everybody. Good to see everyone here today. Here at Progressive Missionary Baptist Church, birthday, we teach and we preach the Bible. Amen. Amen. And we pleasure our allegiance to the Bible. So if you will join me and please stand as we say our pledge to the Bible. On the Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the Amen. You may be seated. So good to see everyone. First, I'd like to uh, give honor to God, who is my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ. And I thank him for saving me for waking me up to see another day. I want to thank you, Pastor Stuckey, for another opportunity to stand before you all here today. My text uh, is from Romans, and uh, the elder was reading it earlier in Romans chapter 1. And my uh, focus verses are going to be 18 to 32. Okay, so the first part of Romans, Paul, he introduces the gospel. Yeah. And he's expressing to us uh, the power of its salvation. Okay, and see, and what right there is 16 and 17, verses 16 and 17, Paul declared and said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Yeah. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Yeah. Yeah. See, the good news does not come automatically. Oh, oh, yeah. Good news is not perceived by the natural man. The good news comes by revelation. Right. See, because we don't know how bad sin really is <laughs> until it's revealed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've titled this message, the message is directed to the church first and also to those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, I've titled this message The Seriousness of Sin. All right. All right. The Seriousness of Sin. Yeah. See, uh, Paul talks about the gospel and salvation of the gospel, and that's my first point. And salvation is needed. It's needed. Look at verse 18. When Paul declares 18, he says, For the wrath of God is revealed. From heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man, yeah. men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Mm. Yeah, the wrath of God is revealed. See, the natural man does not know the gospel. Right. Right. The natural man does not know the wrath of God. Yeah. And that's why it is so imperative that we preach Christ. Crucified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because God does have a wrath against sin. Man, but but you would never know. By the way, that many so-called preachers preach. Yeah, yeah. Preaching a message that says you can live any kind of lifestyle. Yeah. And be a Christian, still go to heaven. You would never know it by the so-called Christian or Gospel music. Huh. If you listen to it, a lot of it, a lot of it just sounds like pop music, or country music. Some of it sounds like hip hop or R and B music. There's no uh, conviction. There's no call for repentance. A lot of it is just self praise. They take one word and then make that one word go over sixteen different notes. Really, I mean, that, that's just showing off. 
on what your talents are. You would never know that God has a wrath against sin by much of the so-called Christian literature. You have to be careful when you're reading Christian literature because much of it is not biblical. And many of it is is uh, based off of mysticism and new age philosophies. Yeah, see, it must be revealed. See, sin is serious. Sin is serious because sin is universal. And therefore, Paul, but this whole argument about sin, he concludes it in chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. If you have your Bibles, turn there. He concludes this whole argument in chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. And he declares in chapter 3, 10 to 12, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seek after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Yeah. See, Paul, he explains how it is that there is not one righteous when he declares that the wrath of God is revealed. So the truth has been revealed. But what does humanity do with the revelation of the truth? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Humanity not only ignores it, but humanity suppresses it. See, all of humanity has access to the truth about God by the general revelation. And that's what my next point is, the general revelation and special revelation. Look at verses 19 and 20. And declares, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Yeah, all humanity has access to the truth about God. And the reason why truth does not manifest in some people's lives and others' lives is because mankind suppress it yeah. we suppress the truth many reject it they insist that it's not the truth see god has made a world and the world testifies of god's existence yeah. Yeah. amen to the existence and the design of creation declares that there is a creator it's incredible just look at you know, just look at the nature. The moon is the exact amount away from the earth to work with the gravitational pull to control the tides that the water doesn't overtake the land. Yeah. That's by design. Yeah. The earth yeah. is just far enough yeah. from the sun. Because if we were a little bit closer, we'd all burn up. Yeah. If we were a little bit further away, we'd all freeze. That's by design. Yeah. See... Yeah. These theories, the theory of evolution, the Big Bang, and the so-called scientific theories, what they confirm, they confirm that mankind has suppressed the truth of what is clearly seen in nature. Amen? And because God has given everyone the same general revelation that he exists, humanity is without excuse to acknowledge God as God. Amen? Look at verses 21 through 25. And it declares, because that, they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made 
like to corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Yeah. The reality of God is unavoidable. Is unavoidable. So although humanity may acknowledge God, because it says, for they knew God. Yeah. So humanity knows that there is a God. But they don't want to acknowledge him as God. They want to uh, uh, try and change him to their, what they want. They want to create uh, him in some image of their likeness and their imagination and worship uh, idols and reptiles and birds and snakes and, and other men. When it is obvious that all of these things are creatures and not the creator. See, now some will say, someone will say, well, how can God hold anyone accountable when he has not given us a personal revelation? I, I was talking to one guy before and he said, man, if, if, if God could just, if he would just show me an angel, then I would really believe that he's real. See, we don't need to have a special revelation to know that God is real and that he exists. Amen? See, an example of a special revelation is what God gave to Moses at Sinai, the Ten Commandments. That's a special revelation. See, God is just, and he judges people only based on what they know. Yeah. And mankind knows there is a God based off the general revelation. But because they did not acknowledge him as God and worship creatures and exchange the truth for a lie, God gave humanity over to their lustful, depraved hearts. Which brings me to my next point is idolatry leads to immorality. Yeah. Look at verses 26 and 28. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. For even their women did exchange the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseen, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which is meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Amen. See, the lie about God leads us to the lie about ourselves. Amen. The lie about God leads us to the lie about ourselves. See, Paul uses these examples the example of homosexuality to show how denying God leads to wickedness and immorality. Yeah. See, now Paul is not saying that homosexuality is the worst possible sin, okay? But just as he used the example of worshiping snakes and crocodiles and birds as idolatry to say it's obvious that they're creatures, he uses this in the same way he uses the extreme example of homosexuality to say how obviously clear the use of our natural bodies are. What is clearer than a man and a woman created to match and to fit and to join in sexual union with each other and not with our own sex, our own kind? See, nature testifies that this is true. And that is why homosexuality here is held up as such a clear example. See, for, for someone to argue that homosexuality is a natural thing is a clear indication 
of a debased mind. A debased mind which suppresses the truth is a clear indication that they have turned aside from everything that is good, right, and true. Yeah, see, but Paul is, Paul is declaring the seriousness of sin by holding up these great sins of idolatry and immorality, right? But does he stop there? No, he doesn't stop. He continues on because the seriousness of sin is just not a matter of great sin, which brings me to my next point that there are no little sins. Now, I know people don't want to hear that. Because we're okay when you say that murder is a sin. Yeah. We're okay when you say idolatry is a sin. We're okay if you say homosexuality is a sin. We're okay. But there are no little sins. Look at verses 29 to 32. And he says, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornications, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. What? Wait a minute. Disobedient to parents? That made it in there? Yeah. Young people, young adults, children. The fifth commandment. Yeah. Let's keep going. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Amen. Yeah, there is no little sin. All sin is rebellion against God. Amen. God is holy. And any sin is not acceptable. See, I don't think that it occurs to our minds just how angry God is with sin. Because we tend to forget how holy God is. I think over in Psalm 7, Psalm 7, 11, and I'm, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but God judges the righteous, but is angry every day with the wicked. God is angry every day at sin. Amen? Look at verse 32. It says, Though they know God's righteous decree, they who practice such things deserve to die. They not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Yeah. yeah. Amen. See, homosexuality, homosexuality, it's, it's not new to mankind. Right? But it, it's, it's interesting that the call for tolerance yeah. of homosexuality has now morphed into a demand for its acceptance. Remember that? About five years ago or so, it was all, we need to tolerate. You need to be tolerant of it. It's, there, there are people that are this way and they're human beings and you know we have to love them too and God, you know, all this and we have to tolerate it. But now, about five years later, now it's a demand that you accept it. You have to accept it on all your TV shows. You can't even watch a good TV show. They got to interject something in there about it. And it's not just homosexuality, but you have to accept homosexual marriage, transgenderism, queerness, non-binary. And those, see, this just goes to tell us that those who rebel against God are not content. That they want everyone to, uh, everyone's approval. Yeah. And you know what else is interesting? It's interesting that we, when I say we, I mean the church, I mean Christians, we always want to equate this part of the scripture at homosexuality. 
but that's not what it says. Yes, Paul does use homosexuality and the worship of reptiles and birds as an example because it is such a blatant contradiction and apostasy of the truth. Not that only homosexuals and idolaters deserve to die, but it says what? But who? They who practice such things. What things are those? Let's take a look at it. what things are those? Uh, uh, fornicators deserve to die. Covetous, covetousness, deceit, proud, disobedient to parents, violence, unforgiving, unmerciful, gossipers. God says deserve to die. Wow. <laughs> How you measure up? How do you measure up? Yeah. How do you measure up? See, this brings me to my last point here. Death is the ultimate judgment on sin. Amen. That was the warning. That was the warning given to Adam in the garden. And Adam sinned and death came into the world. And to this day, death remains. The reality of God's judgment on sin. Yeah, yeah. You can deny it all you want. You can say, oh, passed away, which is a Christian science. The Christian scientists came up with that because they don't believe in death. So they say pass away. You can say pass away. You can say deceased. You can say no longer with this. Call it what you want, but you might as well call it what it is. It's death. These days, you can you can get a replacement heart. You can get a replacement lung. You can get a replacement kidney and whatever else that you might try. Still, death reigns in this world because of God's punishment on sin. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. See, the horror of death is hard to deny. But death is a testimony that sin is real and that sin has been judged by God. See, the medical field and science and hospice and, you know, will they'll come along and they say, oh, death is just a... Uh, uh, part natural part of life it, it it happens as a result of being part of the animal kingdom but you ask anyone who has experienced the death of a close loved one and the pain and the grief and the sorrow felt because of it they will testify and tell you that it's a lie that death shouldn't happen that something is really wrong when death occurs. Yeah, something is really wrong. It doesn't feel natural. It doesn't seem right. Amen? And I want you to understand, here is the seriousness of sin. Whether it be idolatry, which is rebellion against God as our creator, or immorality, which re is rebellion against our own nature. It could be murder or a host of other sins that are listed that really don't seem that important. <laughs> but the result is the same. Sin against the holy God always deserves death. Amen? So my invitation is to you. My question is, how do you measure up? Hmm? Do you take your sin serious enough? Or do you think God is going to make an exception for you? God's going to make an exception for you because you are such a good person. You know, you do more good than you do bad. You think that God's going to make an exception for you because you give a lot of money to the church. You give a lot of money to charities. 
you, you volunteer your time at the mission and you do all these other things, God's going to make an exception for you. Do you think that because your name is on the church roll? Because you're a solid church member that you're good with God? Hmm? I want to tell everyone today that all that matters, you know that song, when the roll is called up yonder, all that matters is when the roll is called up yonder, will you be there? When, when the saints go marching in, Will you be in that number? Hmm? If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you can say yes. <laughs> yes, I'll be in that number. Yes, I'll be on that road. But if not, if not, that's on you. That's on you. Because God does not want you to burn an eternal lake of fire. God doesn't want you to go to hell, but it's up to you. It's your choice. This is the invitation. This is the invitation time. It's up to you. See, uh, 2 Peter 3, 9 declares, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness but is long suffering towards us. I mean, he's patient with us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The first thing that Jesus came saying was repent. That's what Jesus came saying. The reason why some of us and some of you are still alive is because God had mercy in giving you time to get right. The reason why you survived that surgery, the reason why you survived that car accident, the reason why is because God is patient, waiting for you to come to him. He doesn't want you to die in your sin and go to hell. Yeah, someone said, is God going to make an exception? Yes, he made one exception. <laughs> God made one exception. John 3, 16, 17. That's the exception. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God didn't send his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's the one exception. The seriousness of sin this year we need to take sin serious. Take a look at ourselves. And we have to make sure that we are spreading the gospel because the good news is not they just don't know about it. It has to be revealed to people. People think that they're okay. They're living in sin and they're so used to it. See, the world, the world is used to sin. It's not a big thing to them. It's a way of life for them. They don't know that they're perishing. They don't know that they're going to hell. This is the seriousness of sin. God made one exception because of his love. Because of his love. We got to understand God has a wrath for sin. Don't believe all these people out here telling you, oh, you can still continue shacking up and come. You can just you can come to the church and you can still shack up and you can still live in sin. And you're going to go to heaven. Oh, don't believe all these people. Oh, it's just natural. Everybody is sleeping around. It's just it's natural for you to just have sex. It's okay. You can just continue to do it. Just as long as you come to church. Sin is serious. It's so serious that God sent his son to deal with it. He had to die for us. The wrath of God was poured out on Christ for us. And he's offering it to you that you can be saved. And if you're seeing this message, if you're hearing this message, if you're here today, if you have not made Christ your Lord, this is your opportunity. Maybe you need to repent. 
for something that you did this morning. <laughs> Sin is serious. But see, in Christ, there's no condemnation. <laughs> in Christ, there's no condemnation. He took the judgment for us. And we can walk in newness of life in Christ Jesus. And we can have joy. And we can have peace. We have to spread this message to people because people are dying. And they're going to hell. This is the seriousness of sin. This is the invitation. This is the invitation time. I want you to make up your minds. If you're listening to this, if you're hearing this. If you are a church member. If you are saved. Look at your life. Look at yourself. Sin is serious. And God has judged it once already. And that judgment is dominating this world. Everywhere we look, there's death. Everywhere. From little babies to grown people to people getting killed all the time. Death is real. Death is happening. Death is coming. Are you ready? Are you prepared? God made a way for us. Sin is serious. We are offering Christ to you. We want you to come. I pray that someone hearing this message today was stirred by the Holy Spirit to repent. Repent of your sin and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you have made that decision today, I want you to please reach out to us. If there's anyone here, you can come and you can talk with any uh, of the ministers or the elders that are here. And if you're viewing this online, please reach out to us. Let us know that you made the decision. We would love to come alongside of you and help you walk this walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning. Uh, here are your prayer request announcements for Sunday, January the 8th, 2023. I would like to keep the following things in the prayer. I'm going to pray for Deacon Jay Taylor, who has COVID. We also got a message this morning uh, from Clemmy Lister. Uh, her and sister's daughter was killed last night. So we want to keep their family in prayer. There's a memorial service for Linda Walton's brother, Deacon Davy Pauling, will be Friday, January the 20th at 11 a.m. at Evergreen Missionary Baptist Church, Nelson Richard to Oakland. We want to keep the family in prayer as well. And please continue to pray for all our sick and shut in and those who experience loss in their family. The Biblical Counseling Ministry will be hosting its 13-week Greek shared seminar starting this Tuesday, January 10th, from 6.30 to 8.30 on Zoom. The link to the Zoom meeting as well as additional information can be found on the Biblical Counseling page on our church website. For additional information, you can contact me on your page. The Archival Team Ministry will now oversee a new community service feature. It will showcase these services on one of the bulletin on the bulletin board. If you have any community service announcement or advertisement that you would like to publicize, or personally have a service that you would like to offer to PBC members, please contact Sister Charles Edward McCurry and Sister Brenda Davis. The archival team is also planning to showcase members who are currently or have previously participated in an occupation related to law, politics, or government in late February or early March. If you participate in one of these areas, please contact Betty Hicks, John Zeta McCurry, Sybil Evans, or Jessica Price. Also, um, we're also looking for interest, people who are interested in working with young people in any capacity. Please share your interest with Jessica Price. And there are still some concepts in the parking lot, we can take them first come, first serve. And that concludes our announcement and our worship service. We are now have the benediction from our speaker.
Yeah, she did make it last week. Yes. Um, yes, that her father had passed. Amen. We will continue to keep them in prayer. All those in the announcements in our uh, prayer list, make sure that we are holding them up in prayer. So now let us uh, conclude our service today. If you please stand with me. A benediction. For ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And of others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Good job, you guys. You guys are really good. Uh, praise the Lord. <laughs>